guys are both so good. Man, th- yeah. As I spend more time with them, they're both getting better and better and Both better. of them at equal levels. I just hope one is available and okay. decently priced. Welcome to the channel, bringing a real world perspective to the real world whiskey consumer. I'm Josh. And I'm Erin. And we are back with another double blind head to head, which means we have no clue what is in either one of these glasses. It's a surprise. But you do. You know what's in here. No surprises for you, except for how we're going to react to them. Because y'all are like me. You don't like surprises. But that's, surprises are the best. I You're like. a surprise ruiner. I, I can't keep a surprise. Okay. This is going to be a surprise for us. Yes. And what we're going to do is we're going to smell them and taste them and rate them find out the price and see if that changes our ratings before we find out what we're drinking. Yeah. That's why we say we're a real world channel for the real world whiskey consumer. And what I just said was also why she usually says that because I can't say real world very well. It's hard to say. Sometimes, you, can sometimes try it you mumble. Yeah. Yeah. But the point is, is that doing this removes all the bias, yeah. lets us focus on the glass of whiskey in front of us, what we think about it. Yep. And then we find out the price and kind of rate it on value before we find out what we're drinking. We think this gives you the most honest opinions possible. If you like that kind of thing, subscribe to the channel because yeah. this is what we do here. We'd love to have you. Welcome to the family. Yeah, absolutely. These were drawn at random from our blind sample pool. It's constantly rotating bunches of bourbons and rye matchups. There's no telling what's in these glasses. It could be available versus allocated, expensive versus inexpensive. With that said, these both look quite dark. Lovely. They, they look, look beautiful. Really nice. If our eyes are not deceiving us, which they can in the studio lighting sometimes, but mm -hmm. let's go ahead and get into the nose on glass one. Eyes are not deceiving <laughs> us. There is a lot going on. In I here. immediately thought this smells like a Josh bourbon. Yeah, this is a Josh pour. Sweet. Smells high proof because there's a lot of ethanol a coming lot of off ethanol, of it. Yeah. Um, also, I get, I'm getting like caramel. Your your typical what Josh would say your typical bourbon flavor is caramel, vanilla, and oak. Yeah, you know the picture this paints in my brain is the uh, the cotton candy on a stick, okay. but it's all caramel. <laughs> I can, it's, fluff, so like it's fluffy, fluffy caramel. caramel. Yeah, I can see that. And it does have a, a alcohol forward. Oh, very much aggressive edge to this it. This is no stranger to um, alcohol. Yeah. I mean, it is alcohol, but you know what I mean? <laughs> Some yeah. of them. You know what? High level analysis here. Well, <laughs> it's just me. Okay. I just have a whiskey channel. No big deal. <laughs> Let's get into the palate. I don't know what I'm tasting, but I like it. Wow. I mean, I'm tasting like raspberry, strawberry jam, peanut butter, peanut brittle, it's getting really dark and oaky on the back end, almost like with a blackberry note that kind of lingers around with the oak on the back end. This tastes delicious. Yeah, this smells really good. Tastes really good. The proof wasn't as sharp as I was thinking, so I'm going to guess it's Correct. balanced a little bit better. It tastes high proof because I can feel it, but it doesn't feel like it didn't attack me like some high proofs can. This tastes good. I like this. Yeah. That's my high analysis. I think that whatever's in this glass, if it's a single barrel, it's a very good single barrel. If it's a blend, it's balanced very well. Mm -hmm. The finish right now is setting in with a little bit of this cola effervescence that's making my mouth water. A little I'm bit. sorry if you hear that on the mic, but yeah. it is, it's doing what it's doing. Yeah. It's, this is the captain now. Okay. I don't have much control <laughs> over what's going on in my mouth Fair. because this is kind of taken over. Yeah but it's dark, it's dense, it's sweet. It's quite sweet. It is quite sweet, but there's a balance. Maybe it's the proof that's balancing it out that's not making it what I would call sickeningly sweet. Right. Because I don't like to drink a lot of things that over time will make me feel kind of sick to my stomach because of the sweetness. Yeah. There's something in this that balances that out. While it is still sweet, I don't feel like it's sickeningly sweet. I would counter that it is not the proof, but the oak. Either something, it, it's, there's it's, something in yeah. there that makes it balanced, the sweetness balance out. Yeah. It's got a really sweet oak sure. on it. Let's go ahead and get into glass two, okay. see how it compares on the nose. Oh. Whoa, a singed nose hairs on this one. This one is more alcohol forward to me. This also smells sweeter to me. Like, oh, um, yeah, it does. Yeah. like a, like a, you, the first one was fluffy caramel. This one seems like a caramel chew. Yeah, I like agree. solid chewy caramel. I agree with that. I'm going to clear my nose by smelling my skin. That's a tip at home. If you have it, never heard that or seen that before, if you smell your skin or 
beans or coffee beans. I mean, you can just go around smelling beans. <laughs> Kidney beans. You know, that guy, he smells beans a lot. But, <laughs> you know, smell, smell some coffee beans, smell your skin, smell something that can reset your nose. So does because, it work if I smell your skin? I don't know. Find out. Oh, that's kind of creepy. I'll smell the glass. It rubs the lotion on its skin. Okay, now the alcohol vapors are toning down for me. It's also your second sniff. Yeah, it, well, no, it was my like fifth or sixth oh, sniff. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah, maybe it's just I don't have nose hair anymore. But this is coming through with like a cherry vanilla mm -hmm. kind of, I don't know, like sometimes I get this where I say banana split, but it's light on the banana, light on the chocolate. It's mainly just like the cherries and the vanilla ice cream. Okay. But a little bit of chocolate, a little bit of strawberry. I'm getting strawberry. caramel. I can get that too. Let's get it on the palate. This tastes less sweet than it smells. Oh. And that to me is a pleasant surprise. Yeah. It's got this very, very silky texture to it. Hmm. That was the most surprising thing to me on that first sip. This is like a complex woman. <laughs> what is that? Can you expound upon that? No, thought? I cannot. Just like a woman, I can't expound oh, anymore. Man. We're all in the dark on that. I'm sorry, guys. You know, There's many facets to this one. Okay. I guess yeah. that's what I mean. A little bit of an enigma. As <laughs> yeah. You might say, yeah. <laughs> okay. So this, to me, honestly, the silky mouthfeel for what seems to have still a lot of flavor is something that a lot of products don't do. I don't really know what flavors I got because I was so surprised by Correct. the experience. Well, let's take another sip. Let's get another sip. Okay. The second sip is a little more drying as that mm -hmm. tends to be for me because I got more oak on it. Yeah. However, there's just a warmth. I don't know. There's not a flavor. It just feels like warmth. Yeah. This is <laughs> this is an experience glass. Yeah. This is a, a sleeping bag on a slightly cold night, mm. like a nice warm sleeping bag on a slightly cold night, and you slip into the tent. Not that, not that I ever go camping. I was going to say, I'm, when have you been camping? I mean, when I was younger. I'm, I'm too old now. <laughs> I got to go glamping now. <laughs> but for this one right here, it is a gentle warmth that just rolls over you. Mm -hmm. It's very balanced. Yeah. A little tannic, I will say. It, I can see it leaning that way. Yeah. I think glass one is the punchy pour of the two. I don't know. I think glass two is a little bit more balanced. And I thought glass one was balanced. I like them both. I, got to, I need more time with these. Yeah. This is a very interesting matchup. Delicious. I can see why they're paired together. They are comparable. So if one is hard to find or very expensive and you can't find it, get the other one, mm. but we need to spend some more time with them and see what we really think about them. I'm going to make an early prediction. Okay. And I don't, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, y'all. It okay. happens. Aaron's feeling froggy. Go ahead, leap. My early prediction is that if there's like a price disparity between the two, I think this is the most expensive one and this is the cheaper one. Okay, why do you say that? I don't know. I just feel like when I drank this, this tasted expensive. Really? Yeah. Okay. I think they... They could be very comparable, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. And again, I've only had like a couple sips of each. So this is first impressions right off the bat, my prediction. Right. I could be wrong. And if I am, I'm wrong. So sue me. Like, don't sue me. But like, <laughs> this is just my opinion. <laughs> yeah. We are an LLC. <laughs> don't sue us. But the glass, like to me, I do want to spend more time with them, clear my palate and start with glass two. Same. Because coming off of glass one, glass two struck me a certain way. Yeah. And I think if I clear my palate and start with glass two, it's going to come across a little different. That's why we take this break, put you to see the little time lapse thing. But we will be back with our full impressions in just a second. All right. Things just got really interesting after spending some time with both of these. Yeah. What did you think? So I really enjoyed both of these pours. Same. After spending some more time with both of them, glass one did get a little bit um, brighter, maybe is the word for it. I think that's a good word, yeah. And then glass two stayed kind of darker and a little more moody. And today I'm feeling the moody pour. Oh, okay. I'm giving them both officially a thumbs up. However, if you ask me to only pick one to drink, I would pick glass two. Okay. It seemed a little dark, a little more nuanced, and a little bit more balanced as a, as far as like easy to drink, given what I am assuming these are both fairly high proof points. Yeah, I would think so as well. Glass one to me kind of carried over with that same stuff. Although mm -hmm. when I started with glass two and went back to glass one, glass one got a little bit like 
perfumey on the nose. Hmm. Like there's a little bit of florality there. Interesting. Okay. And that was the only thing I didn't love in glass one. And it's why it's getting a thumbs up instead of two thumbs up. Because it, it's very, Are you giving glass two two thumbs up? It's very close to getting thumbs up. But glass two really came through with balance. It had every bit of the strong of finish as glass one. However, it's a little bit more subtle and it goes about its business in a little mm -hmm. bit more of a refined way. Yes. So this is a little bit more braggadocious and in your face, which mm -hmm. we did get on first impressions. Yep. This is a little bit more refined. This is a little Don Drapery. Mm. And so. Although he's a little braggadocious and. Sometimes. Kind of in your face. Well, in the right, in the right circumstances. Glass two though, two thumbs up. Wow. But this is slight. This is a very, very strong thumbs up for glass one. Yeah. This is a very soft thumbs up for glass two. Mm. I really, really, really like both of these. Okay. I really want a bottle of both of these. I hope they're not expensive. That's my only fear. They're not these, gonna be. There's no way. These taste like they might be expensive and or hard to find, which yeah. let's be honest, most whiskey is hard to find these days man you are sorry refresh me because i'm so confused I'm, by these i'm thumbs, thumbs up, up on okay. both i have a preference towards glass two but i very much enjoy both of them okay i'm thumbs up on glass one two thumbs up on glass two okay. strong thumbs up soft two thumbs up okay in our pool we're gonna find out price and see if that changes our ratings glass number one is number 78 so what it, oh, you're making a face i'm assuming that's high price because you don't like spending money on whiskey <laughs> so what's the price so glass number one is two hundred and fifty dollars. Oh, I can't say I'm surprised to be honest with you. Yeah. It's really, 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 really good. Yeah. What's glass number two? The good news is it's cheaper. It is cheaper. It's still expensive in my book. However, it is one hundred and fifty dollars. Okay, this is very rare that we put two high priced products in our sample pool. Yes. And the only reason we do it is because if either one of these are, I'm assuming because of the high price, they're either hard to find, probably hard to find. I bet that, I bet the one we like is the cheaper one, but harder to find. If the the 150 glass two is easy to find and it's cheaper, then I'm 100% gonna try to get that. But if glass two is 250 and easier to find, I would consider getting that instead. Yeah. It just I depends because also I don't like putting effort into finding my whiskey. Like personally, it's just a drink. I don't want to spend my life doing it. I, Josh would, would sit in lines for it. I won't. Small lines. I'm not sitting okay, in any big okay. lines. I'm not camping out overnight. Okay. Glass okay. one, I will say, I just tasted it again, knowing it's $250. I, I want it. I want a bottle. I don't have to have a bottle I at that. Want it that way. Pause Tell for a song me break. Why it ain't nothing but a heartache. Tell me why it ain't nothing but a mistake. I know I never wanna hear or wait to hear you say. I think you're right, yeah. I want it that way. Okay. So you should know, by the way, that we just warmed up before this. This is, <laughs> we're not, we're, we're good. We're let's, good here. Let's get into All right. to what these are. Glass number one, number 78 is. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm having a moment. 78? 78. King of Kentucky. No. <laughs> no, it's 15 not. year. 125.5 proof. Oh, okay. So we don't have a bottle of this. This is from Bill. This is Bill's this King is, of Kentucky. This is a sample given to us by Bill and Delia Cavanaugh. What just beat it? Lucky 7, 15 year proprietor. 126.8 proof. Oh, man. Which have. <sighs> this happened in uh, May on our May live stream. The link. Yeah. The link is oh, in the video description below. Spoiler alert. The link is in the video description below if you want to see how that one played out. But yes, we have had a different Lucky 7 okay. versus King of Kentucky before. Okay. Wow. However, this is wild. didn't we just have another Lucky 7 situation that it didn't do as well? Yeah. So, I can't remember what it was up against, but yeah, I mean, we have so much, we have so many things in our pool mm -hmm. and so many matchups that we're doing all the time. It's hard to keep track. And that's kind of the point. That's so kind we of lose the, track. That's yeah. kind of the point. So we lose track. However, that being said, like knowing that we had just done a matchup with Lucky 7 with something else and Lucky 7 didn't fare as well as it did tonight, 
like your palette can be different on any given day. D what you're comparing something to could change how you feel about something on any given day. So honestly, the whole point of this and the whole point of what, why we do what we do is literally don't believe anything any of us say. It yeah. just- take, take the hype and the bias and whatever you hear anyone else say, it all comes down to your palette. Exactly. Yes, yep. it's your palette, your profile, your preferences, and honestly, it's day dependent. It can be. However, we do tend to, in blinds, pick Lucky yep. Seven over Historically, King of Kentucky. Over the period of time, we've done several Lucky Sevens against King of Kentucky. Except for, at one, least the Lucky Seven 15 years. Except, except for the one 2021 yeah. King of Kentucky single barrel because they are single barrels mm. that we got a sample of from John Peach, shout out to Top Dog. And that one just wrecked shop. Like it ran through everything we put it up against. Mm. This is a super interesting head to head. Yeah. I'm so glad this popped up. They're both very, very good. But before I found out even price, I was just thumbs up on this. Mm -hmm. So I liked both of them. And so knowing what they are, knowing that King of Kentucky is pretty hard to find, is it not? Um, yeah. Yeah. These are both hard to find, but King of Kentucky is, might as well be okay. a mythical unit. So I'm going to yeah. change my score. Did we forget that? Yes. To change it after we found out the price? Yes. It's not on availability, though. It's just price. Oh, just price. Yep. So okay. just on price, $250, I, I did, think you did say you would, I didn't change you would it. keep. I yeah. didn't change Your it. Your thumbs up on both. Yeah. And me, I'm staying thumbs up on King of Kentucky. If I ever find it for retail, I will buy it. I will never buy it at secondary prices okay. of sixteen hundred to two thousand dollars. Lucky seven fifteen year. I'm buying every bottle I can find uh, if yeah. it's in my budget, or I will break the budget for it because it could be a very stellar bottle. It could be. Yeah. Yeah. Man, there this is are. this is a wild head to head. If you thought this was a really good head to head. Go ahead and like the video. If you like this style of content, subscribe to the channel. Yep. If you want to join us on a live stream, go ahead and click that bell down there. It will let you know we're going live. We do that once a month. And the dates change on that. And the dates change. That's why the bell's really important. Yep. By the way, we do have a charity live stream coming up in October. We would love for you to join in either as just a general viewer or participate in the fundraising efforts for mental health. This is a very near and dear cause to our hearts. It really affects everybody, to be honest. Like mental health is non-discriminatory. Yep. It affects everyone, everybody. It affects our veterans. It affects, I mean, it, it doesn't matter, young, old, whatever. Mm -hmm. It just, you know, it, it doesn't play. And it costs people their lives and their health and their happiness. And we support To Write Love on Her Arms, which is an organization that not only provides hope, but direct help. Yes. For people who are reaching out for it. So that if is If they're going a, through mental health struggles, they need counseling. Right. Any, anything like that. Help, yeah. So that's a big deal for us. Yes. That your dollars for donations are going towards helping people. So if you want to be involved in donating a bottle that will help us raise funds for that effort, in the past two years, we've raised over $31,000. Total. Total. Mm -hmm. And we want to raise... We would love to raise $31,000 just this year and go ahead and just double it up. So if you cool. want to help us double it up, yeah. go ahead and email us at stuffandwhiskey at gmail.com. You can donate the bottle and be part of something I mean, way if you have a you. bottle of King of, of Kentucky that you'd like to donate, I'm sure people would, would love yeah. it. And Lucky 7, for that matter, if yeah. you have a bottle of that sitting around. All ours are open, but if we had a sealed one, we would put it in here. Yep. Fascinating matchup great charity if you want to be a part go ahead and hit us up at the email in the video description below we make it super easy for yes. you i think that's it for this one right yeah, yeah. that's it wow. be good to each other y'all and uh enjoy your whiskey drink responsibly be I'm good stunned. to each other <laughs> until next time cheers cheers